This is the solution to written homework 62. This is a rational function, so its natural domain is everywhere that the denominator is non-zero. So we need to solve x minus 1 times x plus 3 squared is equal to 0. Well, those solutions are x is 1 x is negative 3, and therefore the natural domain is anything but those values. So negative infinity to negative 3 union, negative 3 to 1 union, 1 to infinity. So anything but negative 3 and positive 1. Okay, find any vertical asymptotes. So in order to do this, uh, we'll factor the numerator. So two numbers whose product is negative 2 and whose sum is positive 1. How about x plus 2 and x minus 1? Uh, so then that would be now x minus 1 here and x plus 3 there squared. So now notice that these x minus 1's cancel. So this expression is equal to x plus 2 divided by x plus 3 squared, but it's, it's equal to this expression when x is not negative 1, uh, when x is not positive 1. Okay. So find any vertical asymptotes. OK, so then negative 1 is not a vertical asymptote. It's not a vertical asymptote because uh, the multiplicity is the same in the numerator and the denominator. So for x is negative 1, negative 1, you can see that the multiplicity in the numerator, I'm writing negative 1, it's positive 1. x is positive 1, the multiplicity in the numerator is 1, and the multiplicity in the denominator is 1. And the fact that these are the same, the fact that the numerator is greater or equal to the denominator, is telling us that this is a whole. So that's a whole. And then we need to check x is negative 3. So the multiplicity in the numerator is 0, and the multiplicity in the denominator is 2, and this is telling us that that is a vertical asymptote. Okay, so we have one whole and one vertical asymptote. So uh, furthermore, you can see that the um, that the numerator has degree 2 and the denominator has degree 3 and then after cancellation the numerator has degree 1 and the denominator degree 2 <coughs> therefore because the denominator has a higher degree than the numerator there's not a slant asymptote and there must be a, ver a horizontal asymptote of y is 0. So if we were to multiply that out, f of x is x plus 2 in the numerator, and x squared plus 6x plus 9 in the denominator. That tells us that because this is degree 1 over degree 2, that there's a horizontal asymptote of y is 0. And for those of you that memorized that acronym, this is the Bobo case. When the, when the degree is bigger on the bottom, there is a horizontal asymptote of y is 0. Okay, so then the x-intercept 
is when y is zero. So <clears throat> we want to solve x plus two over x plus three squared is equal to zero. Well, that can only occur if the numerator is zero, the numerator. So therefore, x is negative two. For the y-intercept, that's when x is 0. So if we plug in x is 0, that would be uh, 2 over 3 squared, which is 2 ninths. OK, so now let's plug in what we know. So we established that 1 is a hole, so I'll draw this just so I can remember to draw a hole when I cross it. That's not a vertical asymptote, though. Uh, negative 3 is a vertical asymptote. Okay, it has a horizontal asymptote of y is 0. So it's already drawn there, the x-axis. Uh, we can plot the intercepts that we know. So when you plug in negative 2, you get 0. So here's a 0. And when you plug in, <coughs> when you plug in uh, x is 0, you get 2 ninths. So 2 ninths is a small positive number. So something like this. Okay. So now let's consider. Uh, we need to know how does the function behave uh, <clears throat> around these other points. Okay. So how about um, that's interesting. So negative 3 is an asymptote. Interesting. OK. <clears throat> so and negative 2 is a 0. <laughs> OK. So let's plug in some other values. So f, so some other x values that might be helpful. So how about x is um, 2? What if we plug in 2? Then the y value would be 4 over 5 squared. So that'd be 4 over 25. OK. So that'd be some small positive number, uh, which is even smaller than <coughs> So let's plug in x is, um, how about let's plug in x is negative 1, negative 2, how about negative 4? So if we plug in negative 4, that would be negative 2 divided by negative 1 squared, so that'd be negative 2. So negative 2. Let's plug in, how about, um, let's plug in how about negative some value right here. So what is that? That's negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, about negative 3 and a half. Well, if we plug that into the calculator, negative 3 and a half. So that would be in the numerator. If you plug in negative three and a half, that'd be negative one and a half in the numerator. 
and then divide by uh, negative three and a half plus three is negative half. And we're going to square that. So negative half. Let's square that. Okay, so that's negative six. Okay, so if that's negative two, then four, six. So here. Okay. And how about let's plug in another value right here. So that's negative one, two, and a half. So that's negative six. So negative two and a half. <clears throat> okay. So if you plug in negative two and a half in the numerator, that'd be negative half. And then let's divide by uh, negative two and a half plus three is half, and then we're going to square that. So 0 0.5. squared. So that's negative 2. Okay. So this function does something interesting. It has a horizontal asymptote of 0 going this way. And it comes to this vertical asymptote and goes down. Here, this is a hole, so that's open. And going this way, it has a vertical asymptote also. It becomes, has a little bump here, and then decays to the right. So it's a little difficult to see in the, in the plot there. So kind of conceptually, this drawing looks like the following in exaggerated form. So in an exaggerated form, it looks like this, and then that. This is open. And that's the answer.